Well, I walked through the property, had a good look around. I've got a basic idea of what I'm gonna do. As far as designing goes, it's pretty simple. Don't try and make it complicated. Don't try and target it, turn it into rocket appliances. It's simple. Do your, do your design, do what sells. Keep it simple. Shaker white cabinets, gray granite, uh, gray quartz, gray floors, gray paint, the white and the grays. These are the big things that sell easily right now. On a project like this one right here, I wanna be out of here within about four weeks. I'm gonna give myself about three or four day grace period to get the job done. But if I get it done, I'm in and out in five weeks, I'm okay. I still get the house back on the market and prime time for selling season in the middle of the summer. That's what my goal is here. Steve has uh, this five weeks, four weeks, get the job done. It's not happening. It's probably gonna run into six or seven weeks, but without seven him knowing. Seven weeks, my ass, right there. Four weeks, not a problem. You've done this before. Seven weeks, come on. I got this guy. Two goals here in that room, Captain America. Get in there, start doing your thing. Upstairs is a little more of a challenge than I anticipated. Normally I'm pretty good. I take a look at a home. I can tell what's gonna happen when I rip it apart. This place here had a lot of wood paneling over the walls. Usually that's an indication, okay, we've got rotted plaster or something along those lines. Of course, when we peeled it off, that's exactly what we found. Now we got the challenge of removing these materials and getting a flat drywall surface over top. These are also things that are gonna take me time and money to fix, and I'm gonna budget here, so I really gotta watch my ass. God forbid you should make any kind of bedroom noises or anything like that when you're in the master bedroom, you got your kids sleeping in here. Cut the stink of this place. Now that kitchen, man, that, that's a real travesty. It was a poor design to begin with, but what a shit hole. I do a lot of custom kitchens, high-end kitchens with my company, up to $60,000 kitchens. I've got a limited amount of space there. So it's a bit of a challenge to make it look good. But I got the right crew. We got the right guys working and the right materials. I'm very confident in the end, we're gonna make this place work. I don't care what Steve says. Steve wants us to walk up and down. I didn't get like this for no, for no reason. So I'm throwing all the garbage out the window. I don't care what he says. We're demoing this place already, you know, we're getting our hands dirty, we're sweating, it's hot as shit up there. And, uh, you know, where's, where's Steve? Where the hell is Steve? I just need a little snack. Obviously, guess where he is? Probably eating, I can guarantee you that. It's the applewood. I cooked that last night in my smoker. The applewood. Oh, makes it good. Okay, so basically this house here, I bought this house for about 180 grand. I come here to do my demolition. We want to do a nice, clean, efficient flip. We got to be fast and in and out and clean to make the money on this place. Big problem is now during demolition, we just found asbestos. Stop right now. Everybody outside. Let's go. Nick, clean yourself off. Everybody out of the house. Now I'm worried about my guys, worried about their health and the cost of removal. This is gonna slow the project down, cause me a big problem now. I don't know how I'm gonna get this done. My guys and my team, we're all like family here, you know what I mean? I've known this guy 25 years. We got a history and the last thing I wanna see is one of my guys get hurt over a bad chemical or a dangerous uh, building product or a building material in a house. This is a specific problem. Now this is, this is a big deal. This is a real serious problem that I gotta deal with now. I gotta call on my asbestos guys, have the pros come in. Hey, Skip. Uh, not too bad, buddy, not too bad. Uh, I'm doing a flip on a house here that I'm doing in Hamilton, and my uh, all the plaster is full of horse hair, so I know it's asbestos. But I don't, I, I break it, I don't see anything shiny, like, there's nothing reflective, but I'm telling you, this is full of horse hair, it's just full. Like, there's water, just like a bunch of additional put a sprayer and spray it, just so open it to it, and it'll cause it to like not make dust, right? As far as it goes, we're gonna soak the place down and try to remove as little plaster as possible. So I took a good look at this and I talked to my Skip McLean, he's a pro in this. Yeah, so what do you, even though it doesn't matter, even though now we're fairly certain this is not asbestos, we're still gonna treat it as such. So we're gonna give it, we're gonna soak it down, mix some soap and water together. We're gonna spray the place, soak it down. Plus, even the Portland cement itself, it's bad for us. So when it's crumbling like this, I just wanna keep everything out there. Lots of water, soak it down. Okay guys, I think we're ready to keep working, so 
Let's keep... God damn it, Dave. Sorry. Squirt me in the head. Sorry, about that. I didn't do that on purpose. He's gonna squirt me. I can tell he's, he's looking at him. Dumb <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Be professional. <laughs>
I can take the guys on the water for day fishing. They've been working hard to figure they deserve a little fun. Save money. Saving money is making money at the end of the day. Either way, that's what every contractor tries to do. That'll work well on the wall for the shower upstairs. This year, it's funny, this is actually my, uh, that's my best seller. It's called Canyon Gray. Best selling tile for my company. Canyon Gray, you can't buy sell, but that's my fail safe. See, some, I've heard some people out there say, I don't want my houses to be cookie cutter. I'm the queen of real estate. <laughs> but meanwhile, yes, you do want cookie cutter. So I know this is going to work every time. It's going to sell every time. I know how it installs. I know how it is to work with the product. So cookie cutter is a very good thing. Don't forget, you're not selling to say, 10 houses to the same guy. These are living all 10 of them. So yeah, cookie cutter, fine. Here, what is this one? Here, hang on. Either one of these is perfect for that kitchen floor. Should be 361. I think it's at 316. Well, if, that, if you did 316, that's the amount it is now. So yeah, you like you only 50 bucks. That's no, right. you change the rules, man. That's just the way it works. Okay, so basically what we're doing here now is we gotta clean the outside of this house off. Reason being is you can't paint over top of all that stuff. You try and paint over top, you're gonna mess up the color of the paint, and the paint's not gonna stick very well. Common sense. Everything's gotta be clean before you paint it. We're gonna get the outside of the house painted up really good. I got my guy coming in today. Steve, you ready or what? I'm sure you spit on it first. We're going to be rolling the outside of this house. The reason why you don't want to spray, high wind conditions, overspray, blowing all over everybody's houses. Can't have it going on my new windows. It's going to be a nice, clean, easy job. Take the time to roll it. Use a nice, modern, gray paint. Ties in with the new white that we just put it over top of these windows. At the end of the day, it's going to be modern looking. It's going to be cleaned up, ready to sell. That's good, because when the windows, the white windows there, they'll pop, right? Take a look at this deck. Not only is this deck covered in garbage, but it is garbage itself. Basically what we're gonna do is gonna reconstruct this entire deck. The whole entire thing is gonna come out today. Who wants a piece of me, brother? A lot of shit going on. I don't got time to take this apart piece by piece. I am gonna do it the Canadian redneck way. I'm gonna pull it down to the badass truck. Pull it down. Got her done. Oh, I just want to get some work done here. That's, that's kind of what I want to do. Oh, I just want to get some work done here. That's kind of what I want to do. That's good. Mm -hmm. I'll take off my stuff. So basically now where we're at at this point. In the last couple of weeks work, we've gotten past the fundamentals. We've got the electrical done, we've got the drywall up. Hey, when I get it in my eyes. Budding and taping, which was a royal pain in the ass. These things are finished now. The place is painted up. Now we're moving to the finishing touches. I messed up my standards of practice. I only use materials that I've used dozens of times before. I've never used these tiles. I saw them. I thought they looked good. I wanted to stick them in, see? Now look at the fucking problems I got. Always stick to your standards of practice. No, here's what it is. Okay, the ed on the rounded edge of every single tile, okay? There's like a white, uh, basically like a cut marker on the edge of every tile. It looks like absolute crap. I do not have the time to clean every single one of these. All right, now one thing I tell you about Al, that not only is this guy my neighbor, he's a hell of a solid guy. He's been a supplier of mine for about 10 years. Now, you can't say every supplier is going to leave their store, come down, check out the material for you, and find out what the problem is. Stevie, what's happening? Hey, 
Nice right, coming down. Right on the edge there. And now I've tried washing it. I've tried water. I've tried using parcel, anything like that. It's an absolute pain in the ass. Dude. It's, it's not coming up easy. At the end of the day, he covered my ass. He knocked out some money. He covered my labor to fix these things up. It's not good to start installing. Hey, now, when are you going to pay me? <laughs> <laughs> Everything that I've done in this, I've run bulldozer, I've run excavator, I've been a carpenter, I've been a plumber, I've done everything. Tiles. I hate tiles. Here's the texture I want my mortar right here. It's a little bit uh, a little bit wet, but it's not runny. It'll hold, but it's, it sticks to anything that it touches. I fucking hate it so much. It's like a hemorrhoid operation and a root canal at the same time. There's I'd rather clean toilets all day long with my fucking toothbrush. I hate doing tiles. So if you're gonna spend an extra 10 minutes getting your first line perfect, you do it. Otherwise, you'll get halfway through the floor, you'll be so jammed up, you won't even know what to do anymore. Still working with an old home, and uh, we all know that these, none of these walls are going to be straight. But the most important is that when you install these casings, they have to be straight. If they're not straight, what happens when we install those doors? That's right. They're not going to. They're not going to open properly. Once we get to this point, start moving up. This is where the job clicks together, right at the end. Well, six and three quarters. Comes right out. Now what this is going to do is it's going to help me help it bond and hold in place because that's what glue does, dumbass. Got a nice tight fit. I take my nail gun and don't push too hard on this. We just touch it with the trim underneath this bevel, tack one in. The nails, basically, they just hold the trim there until that glue dries. The glue is actually what holds it on. That is the perfect grout texture you want right there. I can kind of mold it into something if I wanted to, but it's sticky at the same time. What would be a good way to describe the consistency? Burger. So when you're doing this, you need to make sure you're always going on an angle. Keep your float to a 45 degree. And run and just smash that grout into the water. Yeah. When you bend over like that, you gotta arch it back, right? Turn to the side, get a real sexy look at your face, and make sure you creep out everybody in that room over there. Make sure there's eye contact. You don't want the eye contact. contact. Generally, you go ahead and you start washing the grout right away. Again, dry sponge, you've gone over all the grout lines, now it's time to start taking all this extra material off. And you're just going to wipe it. This is as clean as it's going to get for now. This we have to let dry, and then we're going to buff it out across. How's she coming? Good. Okay. A little bit darker than I wanted, but it's going to work. The good thing with the dirt road is, is that even though you're going to get a lot of traffic on it, a lot of times, if you don't clean your floor enough, people are lazy, a lighter color gray will be black in the end anyways. I come into the job site this morning, full of piss and vinegar, ready to go. I get on site, what do I see? Nick Messick took a sawzall and cut off all of the front railings of the house. We were keeping these, what the f I did not need that today. Nick, that's a big problem. That's a huge problem. You got a bubble gum them back on for me? Well, this morning, Steve told me to cut three inches off every vertical but I guess he just meant for the stairs. I assumed he meant every vertical on the porch, so I cut off the entire railing at three inches, not even realizing that he's keeping the railing. It's gonna put the squeeze on my nuts just that much stronger right now. I'm right by my deadline. I've gotta get out of this house. I got customers waiting in other jobs. I can't be here forever. I can't build new ones. It's not in the budget. So I had to outsource a welder. Luckily, Toodle's father-in-law had a welder sitting at his house. I had to drive all the way across the city to pick this thing up. Now, I'm gonna test my hands at being a welder. Here we 
feel like uh, Dr. Emmett Brown from Back to the Future. All right, so we're installing these steps now. There's a lot of movement on these stairs also. And we're gonna be scooting from underneath and they're gonna grip into it. But before I install this, I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, some silicone. So I'll stop squeaking. All right, Jay. You can go ahead and screw them in, bro. So Jay's gonna be underneath, screwing them underneath. So now, here we are getting ready to put in our kitchen. Everybody knows your kitchen cabinets are screwed directly to the wall, but the screwy kitchen that I got today, don't know why it's like this, I bought a million kitchens from these guys before. Check out this blundering numbskullery right here. I got a layer of drywall, I got plaster under here, then this is two inches away from the wall, so by the time I take a three inch screw, I got nothing. This is one more example of the kind of things that you can expect to see when you're flipping a house yourself. So now I gotta take over leftover building materials, put them together, pull this piece out, screw them against the wall, put the piece back in, screw the cabinets to this. It's always important you start in your corner. Everything comes out from your corners. That's where you wanna build out from. Now I'm gonna set in my bases without screwing them in, to make sure my layout is where it's supposed to be. Okay, so we're over top, like so, see you. Okay, very important that this is flush, right at the front here. But at the same time, now the back side of my cabinets are gonna be all messed up. This means I gotta go underneath, Shim things up properly, make sure it's resting in the ground, and then screw it in. Keep in mind, when you're putting your granite, your quartz, whatever you're putting on here, this is very heavy stuff. Sometimes these slabs themselves can weigh thousands of pounds. Then you got kids on the countertop. You gotta make sure this stuff is properly secured. I should be okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start it on the upper cabinets. Now, people sometimes wonder, hey, where should I put these cabinets? How far up do I go? Standard is 18 inches above counter height. Now the countertops are gonna be using in here, three quarters of an inch thick. So 18 and three quarters, we make our line, set a straight line around there. Once you put the straight line around the perimeter of the kitchen, all I gotta do is attach a two by four to the wall, rest my cabinets on top, screw them to the wall, Bob's your uncle. All right, so now that the kitchen's in salt, we got uh, the guys here with the granite, they're coming to uh the granite in, so they've already leveled it all off, and now they're just mixing up an epoxy with the color to uh, do the joints. You guys are done. They did an amazing job. You can barely even tell that there's a joint here. And uh, we got our uh, double kitchen undermount sink installed too with the epoxy and some clips. Drilled in the hole for the sink. And then we got these guys here just bracing and holding down pressure for it when it dries. Now it's down to the wire. If we don't get out of here today, you, me, you, everyone, we're all I got you out of the military. I trained you from scratch. Look where you are now. You belong here. Look at you, you lead this team for me. I need you, you got my back. You belong here. Brother, you fucking smoke way too much, but you belong here. Thank you. It's our last day. It's our last fucking chance we have right here. We're gonna get this house done. Are you guys with me? Let's get it done. Dinosaur. Not too shabby looking at one. Let's get that belly. You see? I hate installing these. These are my worst railings to install. I hate them. You'll see what I mean when I start putting the spindles on and they all start bouncing. You gotta put before you put the next one on top. After that. Next one, next one. One second. Never scrap. This is what I mean. See how there's the key? Look. Finally, you can see here, we finally got this place done. Let me tell you, it sucked, but it came out beautiful. This 
big old chimney we had here. We took off everything that was on the outside, all the old plaster and everything like that. We sanded down the brick and just left it bare. It's got a nice flat look. It actually ties in with the kitchen. We were not budgeted to take this thing out of the house. We didn't have it, so we had to keep it. Now we laid down this beautiful tile. It's a porcelain glazed tile. It's got a high glaze to it. It went with my design. It came out beautiful. In the kitchen, let's talk about the kitchen. This is actually a very high quality kitchen. Soft closing doors. We've got a nice backsplash here, the tools did for us. Now we've got the quartz countertop, which kind of matches the floor. All right, so now, if you remember before, this stairway was an absolute travesty. It was terrible. It was on every different angle. I had to jack this whole entire area up, structurally supported, in order to make these stairs level. That was a pain in the ass, but we got it done. Solid oak, did it here in-house, nice railing, looks badass, let's go upstairs. Take a look at this railing. It's simple, it's small, it's nothing crazy, but square spindles, nice railing, solid oak, stained, flat finish. It looks cool. It's an easy install and it's the cheapest way to go. Nothing too crazy, but it's nice, it's open. You're not feeling claustrophobic in here now. We got a nice double closet, got an area over there for a makeup chest or something like that, or furniture, whatever the fuck people want to put there, I don't know. Four pictures to what it is now, it's really, really changed. No more dead lookers in here. Okay, another bedroom here, maybe a kid's bedroom. The drywall in here came out phenomenal. Nice trim carpentry, bright kinds of paint, the right colors to make the house work properly. This one makes it look good, this one makes it sell. One thing that I know well is bathrooms. Not only do I spend a great deal of time in them, man, I do build a lot of them. Now in this situation, I did not have nearly enough room to put a standard bathtub in here. So I was dictated to go over budget. I had to buy this baby here. I think it was like 1200 bucks for a tiny little short bathtub, but I had to make it look beautiful. We've got a nice shower head up here, small vanity, is all I can put in. So we put on some nice faucets that we're making it work. This one was a tough cook, but check out how nice and straight these lines are put out. You walk in, it's crisp, it's cool, it's clean, the air conditioning is working, it's cool in here now, no one's dying of heat, it's a beautiful place. Now we got a little powder room down here. We got a decent little vanity in here. We got the right colors. We got a nice toilet in here. Elongated bowl, all that stuff like that. Which gets you lots of room to sit down there. It's like a lazy boy. It's like, oh yeah. I'm gonna sit here and take a dump. I know it's good. The guy, Helen, when she goes shopping, she buys dog shit. Me, that's why I buy the gourmet shit. So I drink my coffee, I want to fing taste it. But that's not my problem right now. What's on my mind right now is not the coffee in my kitchen. What's on my mind right now is the dead hooker in my fing basement. Well, gee, Lance down here. You, Nick, everybody. Lance, you're opening it. You have the honors? Do it. What the hell is in it? <laughs> All right, so we're down in the basement now. The place is pretty much done. Now the basement being a nasty, nasty, horrible looking place before. It was brutal in here. It smelled like dog shit. It looked like dead hookers may or may not have been living down here at some point. Now it's nice, it's clean, it's open. There's not much else you can do with this place. Make it clean, make it so it doesn't stink. People can come down here, figure it out for themselves. be out of here within about four weeks. I give myself a three or four day grace period to get the job done. He has uh, this five weeks, four weeks, to get the job done. It's not happening. This is unreal! <laughs>
Yes! Sometimes, man, I just want to punch him in the head with my foot.